This is a radio show for people with problems. Home improvement problems, that is. And for people who want common sense guidance on how to build green and live a more sustainable lifestyle. Send an email or call into the show. The Mighty House crew is on the job. This is Mighty House. There we are. We're back again. And I, I, I love this place you picked out. We, I, I ran down to Florida with Rich. And he's got this pink flamingo thing going on. Move back out of the way. Look, look at that house look here. It. And then you got the pink right flamingo. That's that's beautiful yeah. color, Rich. I love your house, man. You, ch you choose that yeah. paint yourself? <laughs> no, you just go into Ace and buy whatever's left over and mix it together. And that's what I got. <laughs> Excellent. Well, uh, yes. today we're going to talk about carbon monoxide. And uh, we'll get into that in a little bit here. I uh, want to say thanks to the Niles Design District for helping sponsor the show. Just go to NilesDesignDistrict.com. Also, make sure you click on the uh, subscribe button and uh, click the bell. That way you're notified the next time we post something. We're also doing these little uh, one-minute vignette things for, uh, you can call it Robbie's World. I don't th really think they're called Clutter Clarity. But you can check those out on our channel also. Yeah, did you watch the smelly, the smelly Balls one? Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. I know. That was pretty good. She's, pretty she's good. on it. She's got these little <laughs> things. I think it's Robbie's World more than it is really Clutter, mm, uh, clutter, clutter Clarity yeah. anymore. Yeah. So, yeah. But that's okay. Check them out. They're on the channel, and they're a lot of fun. So uh, with that, let's just dig right in here and uh, start uh, out with. Well, last week we did the show on fire extinguishers. Correct. No, smoke detectors. That too. We ended with a fire extinguisher. <laughs> yes, we wow. did. Yeah, it's only been a week. You can remember what it's, we did. It's a whole week ago, man. How can you remember exactly what you did? I know. <laughs> so anyway, we were doing show up uh, smoke smoke detectors, yes, and sir. then we brought it all the way to carbon monoxide or combos. So we thought we'd just do a separate show on carbon monoxide yep. because it is just as important to understand why you have mm -hmm. a CO detector. Yeah, it is. Uh, but what causes it? it it's, it's odorless. It's, uh, it's, you don't smell it. You don't, you don't see it. So you don't taste it. You don't taste it. And so it's really hard to figure out all of a sudden, you know, what's going on. So if you have no gas appliances, no propane appliances in your house, and you do not have an attached garage, you're probably going to be pretty safe. If you have an all-electric yes. home, you may not, and, it, and you have a detached garage or no garage at all, you're probably going to be okay. The chances of having uh, carbon monoxide uh, have a problem it's with slim. that in the house is going to be slim, very right. slim. So I'll give you a great example, though, with, with what you're talking about. So my house is all electric. Yeah. But I have an attached garage. So there you go. And I do like to tool on my cars. Yep. And I have the low level, which we'll talk about later. Um, it will alarm in the laundry room. <laughs> which is the room right next to the garage. Yep. So <laughs> it is. Yeah. It happens. So uh, so let's go ahead and dig into this. Uh, what kind of uh, different uh, carbon monoxide detectors are there out there? So well, I mean, just, yeah. Most of the time, you know, people don't. Again, we talked about with smoke detectors. Your house is older. You don't have a hole in the ceiling with wiring for a carbon monoxide detector. So what do you end up doing? You buy a plug-in type. Right. You no. Know, so we want to make sure that you have something somewhere. Correct. Correct. There you go. So uh, now he's got one up here. This is a wired unit, and uh, mm -hmm. that one you can plug in. Uh, it, a lot of times they'll also have smoke, so you can get the combo units if you want. Right. And and uh, and then those you can just install in the same location. They're nice. This one also is uh, just like a plug-in model, and you just you can plug that into an existing outlet, and you don't have to worry about it. They also have the battery operated ones, which uh, you can do also. So very similar to the smoke detectors. Uh, they right. operate, you know, obviously by checking for uh, carbon monoxide. So you want to check those out. Uh, where should they be placed? Well, one of the things is that because carbon monoxide is lighter than air, it tends to rise. So you do want your carbon monoxide set high. So that is the actual downside to having them plugged in because mm -hmm most houses don't have any outlets high that are suitable for that. Right. So you would have them at the floor line and if it was in the air and it went from the ceiling and it built up to where it was at the outlet, you're in it. 
So again, <laughs> yeah. you got to be careful with that. But it's still better than nothing, you know, from one room to the next. Correct. So, but your com, you know, and the other thing before you go on to like exactly that, you mentioned it that you can get them a combo with the smoke detector. Mm -hmm. um, and as we discussed last week, your smoke detectors are good for ten years. Right. These but carbon monoxide detectors are not. Yeah, they're only good for what seven, right? Seven years. Yeah. So that's the only downside to doing the, the combos. combos. Yeah. You know, but as long as you kind of know that and understand it, because otherwise you put a CO detector right next to your smoke detector. So now instead of having one ugly thing in your ceiling, you have a pair of them. <laughs> right. And every place that you have a smoke detector, you don't need to have the carbon monoxide. I would just no. put one on each level. That is the combo right. unit. And then everything else is, would, would be okay. And, right. and uh, you'll, you'll have a, a safer house that way if, if they're done like yeah. that. So. Yeah, they prefer that they're mounted at least five feet above the floor line. Right. So if you've got an outlet, clock outlet, something like that, that you could tie into, that's great. Right. So uh, UL says the standard requires detectors to alarm within 90 minutes when exposed to 100 parts per million, 35 minutes when it's exposed to 200 parts per million, and 15 minutes when it's exposed to 400 parts per million. And some mm -hmm. detectors are more sensitive to that, and we can get into that in a minute here. But what happens if you go in and out of the house every 30 minutes? It resets. It starts over. <laughs> right. Because all of a sudden you've reduced that amount where you go outside, you open a door, and now the level drops, and, and now it's going to clear it. And so then it's going to start that over again. So um, that's one of the, the problems with this is if you open, open and doors, uh, close doors a lot, you're allowing that fresh air in, so you might be sitting in uh, 50 parts per million for right. years and never know it. Or in this case, call it 80 parts per million for years and never know it. You'll always have, maybe you have some symptoms where you kind of have headaches all the time or you're not feeling right, you're a little dizzy mm -hmm. once in a while. And it could be because these alarms are not going off correctly. So pop that, uh, that there you go, that chart up there. So there you go, Rich. Right. Right. So, and, and as you ran through it, that 40 parts per million, now the original carbon monoxide detectors that were put on the market were more sensitive than what's on the market today. Yep. They had a problem with nuisance calls. Um, the <laughs> alarm would go off, fire department would show up at the house, they'd open the door to rush in to save you, and just by opening the door, they'd clear out the carbon monoxide. Right. So that you do have to look around. So as Ron started the show with, you know, where what causes carbon monoxide? Well, it's anything that's burning fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. So it could be a car in a garage if it's attached, it could be your furnace being back it could be with a leak, it could be your water heater backdrafted, could be your oven on, you know, maybe you're cooking a turkey for too long, uh -huh. you know, that will cause a buildup of carbon monoxide and make people ill. Uh, and that's something you want to monitor. Right. So, so and uh, you've got the 40 parts per million in 10 hours, 50 parts per million in eight hours. So this is how long it takes for those alarms to go off. And, right. Yeah, you this know, is not a safe thing. This is how long the government says you have to have an alarm go off this in this amount of time. Right. And you might want to know a little bit sooner than that. <laughs> Just I would say so. So yeah, this this number at the bottom is the is the standard, the 400 parts per million yep. and the four to 15 minutes sure. is yes. there. So based off of this ratio, all the other ones behind it are just based off of off of that. Right. So. so, and I believe OSHA requires, I don't know if you've got that in there or not. Uh, yeah, you do. Um, we'll go to the next chart. Um, at, uh, at, at 200 part or 50 parts per million, OSHA uh, requires you to have some uh, other protection and, and have uh, alternate air to, to breathe if yeah. you're working in yeah, those I've areas. Yeah, that's weird. I guess I must have screwed that one up. But anyway, yeah, it's 50 parts per million for eight hours is all OSHA would allow you for exposure. So if you're an employee working someplace, auto mechanic, right? right you could do air monitoring. Uh, and if you're above 50 parts per million during your eight hour shift, you must get fresh air or, you know, whatever. Correct. So I was telling you something that if OSHA is saying that, then, you know, you, you definitely want to watch the venting in your house. Right. And some of the other uh, symptoms you've got here, uh, headache, fatigue, dizziness, and nausea after two to three hours. That's 200 mm -hmm. parts per million. Now, where this thing's going off, at 400 parts per million, you've got headaches within two hours, life-threatening after three hours, um, 
800 parts per million, the dizzy, nausea, convulsions within 45 minutes, unconscious within two hours, and at 1,600 parts per million, you've got all those other symptoms and you're dead. Really, I guess that's what you come down to. Within an hour. <laughs> Within an hour. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. somebody finds you. Right. I mean, that was the thing in, in the Navy, too, is, is we have a lot of airtight doors. So the sure. carbon monoxide, you're not gonna, it's not necessarily going to get through all of those. It, it really depends on your maintenance guy. But, yeah, sure. it, should, it shouldn't get through. Um, right. So they told us to start looking through the portholes before you open a door. So first off, check for fire or anything else. I mean, even if you're just you're walking, I went to the vending machine and I'm coming back. You just always oh, doors closed. Might be something. Might be a reason for right. it. Right. So when you look in there, you see if there's anybody else laying down. If anybody else had had fallen over or anything like that, because if I'm the guy who's going to open up that door, guess where all that carbon monoxide's going? It's right in my you. face. As yeah. soon as, now I'm mm -hmm. another guy laying on the floor. Right. But the door's open. But the door's open. So yeah. So now we just continue. <laughs> Many more people, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so the thing is, all these alarms that you buy at the store, the carbon monoxide detectors, and what code requires us to install, they do work. Yes. We just don't like the idea of the extended exposure. Um, there, there's no safe level of carbon monoxide. UCLA did a study, uh, and it showed that long-term exposure, even five parts per million during pregnancy could lead to smaller birth weight and undersized heads in the babies, yep. which, you know, that's a, that's sad when you think about it, like, sure. and you'd never think that, right. You know, you're yeah. not going to under, you know, realize what was going on when, after you have a baby and, and you, you start wondering, you're never going to think back to five parts per million in carbon monoxide. Right. Because and you're your never going to be alarmed to that with right. a store bought. Yeah, that's exactly it. So right. that brings us to the low level. So the difference is we call the other ones your your run of the mill market, you know, code required carbon monoxide detectors. But there is a, a there are low level carbon monoxide detectors on the market. That's a fine hand model there. Isn't it? Your wayward pinky is disgusting. <laughs> Where pinky, they, oh, I don't out. see it. I don't, oh, there, this one? <laughs> yes, yes. Pinky's out. Pinky's out. Of course it is. There we go. Yes. Anyway, so yeah, the low level carbon monoxide detectors will actually show zero when there's like nothing. And they typically will start reporting at around anywhere from five to seven parts per million. Right. And you can adjust the alarms on them typically. But that will tell you exactly what's present. And Ron has those in their travel because they're battery operated. Yep. Um, and we've laughed about it where you can't drive down the Dan Ryan with it in the car. <laughs> no, you can't. Not, di not during rush hour. With yeah, the windows the up, AC off. running, it will go off in wow. the box. It will go yes. off. And, and that, that's, there's road rage for you right there. Does, does OSHA know that some people are stuck in there for eight hours at a time? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it sounds funny, but it's, it is. It's insane oh when gosh. you think about it. And, you know, like my truck has a, a, I think all new vehicles have fresh air intakes in them, right? Sure. Some you can close. Majority you cannot. Right. So, you know, you get behind a truck or a bus or whatever, and that's just pumped right through your grill into your cabin. And in you have grill. No to close that. At least the old yeah. cars, you had to close the vent. Right, exactly. So, so it's crazy. Um, these two in our shop, it, it, uh, they sit here. We've got one in, in the office, and it just sits in the middle of the in, middle of the room. But we've got windows to the outside, right next to the parking lot. And if a truck pulls up and stays running because it's winter now, and they leave their truck running, the windows leak enough that that will get in and set these alarms off. So. Um, what level one, we need new one... windows. Oh. Two, we need to shut the trucks off. <laughs> but we don't. Yeah. So. What level yeah. do you have that one set at? Oh, it this... says low levels. So I mean, what is it, that? It, as soon as it, low. It, as soon as it, it it'll have uh, it'll say point. Let me show a display. Let's see. It's been as high as fourteen parts per million, and it uh, and I think it goes off at ten. Right now, it's zero. So yeah. um, they do vary. Like when you know doing research, all that. I mean. And that one there is uh, a CO Experts, I believe, and you know, available like on Amazon. Not a sponsor, should be. Nope. But no, we've been using those for a number of years, and we take them with when we're traveling. Yep, yep. You, know, you put so, it in a suitcase, you go to somebody else's house, you put it there on the nightstand, and 
monitor the CO in their house. It's good to have it in your car if, if you're flying, anything like that. It's a it's a great option to have uh, available to you. And and at, at at ten parts per million, it starts making alarms. So, um, if, which means you either have something running right? or something leaking. Correct. It Correct. should be zero. Correct. Or I, your turkey's almost done. You might need to open a window. <laughs> Because that's why people get all ornery at Thanksgiving. It has nothing to do with the tryptophan in the turkey. It's the right. damn oven's been on, and right. it's all cranky from carbon monoxide poisoning. There you go. That's my that's my thought. So, uh, really, we would highly suggest you go there. Go to coexperts.com. You can pick one up there directly. They're not cheap. Uh, they do expire after seven years, and you have to replace them. Um, but it has a lifetime battery in it also. So you just, it, it comes, it's ready to go. And, right. um, it's a, it's a great product to have. I have one on the nightstand. I have one here in our office just, just because we've got, you know, things going on. You just, you don't know for sure. And people will die in their sleep because of this. So that's why I keep it in the bedroom. Um, yeah. And if you have a, like a late model car that has the push button start, uh, huh. And you have an attached garage, I highly recommend that. I know of at least 10 deaths a year mm -hmm. from those cars, either people forgetting to turn them off. Yep. And then the hybrid cars are kind of bad because they'll start themselves to recharge batteries. Right, because people left them on. Right. But now they've, they've reprogrammed those. Uh, as long hope. as it's been updated, that if it hasn't been moving in a certain amount of time, it will shut down completely. But they, when they first That's came a good out, thing. when they yeah. first came out, if even it, it would just run down the battery and it would automatically start. And, and if it was an attached garage, well, there yeah. you go. So, all right, with that, I'd say uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button and click on the mm -hmm. bell. And uh, until uh, we until come back, week. we'll figure out what we're gonna do in uh, next week. I, yeah. I have no topic yet. Well, but. it'll be life-saving whatever it's going to of be. Of course, <laughs> and very, very important. Okay, Sonar? We should talk about life rings and buoys. There we go. <laughs> there you go. Wait, Ron's, Ron just learned to fly. Let's talk parachutes. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah there, there, we go. there you go. Yeah, or hard hats, however you want to look at that. Parachutes so, and life preservers yeah. next week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, keep it square and level. Until well, next time. Next time. <laughs> Got it right this time, dude. Like yeah. we, we ended it like nice and solid. Man. Capture that. Yep. Good thing I'm recording. Oh, that's really important. <laughs> yeah, well, that's when you go, oh crap. <laughs> Located on Milwaukee Avenue, the Niles Design District is a home improvement destination for consumers, designers, and contractors. For those looking to renovate a kitchen or a bathroom, expand with a new addition, or enhance their curb appeal, the Niles Design District in Niles, Illinois offers everything in one convenient location. It's your road to a better home.